Hogwarts Castle, a 5-inch gauge locomotive. Part 3, dismantling and cleaning the locomotive chassis. The tool that I'm using in the picture is a pair of circlip pliers, and I'm using this tool to loosen the special bolt that holds the connecting rod to the front wheel. In this part of a steam locomotive, there's not a lot of room to play with. This special bolt has to be very slim, because this part of the connecting rod goes right behind the crosshead when the wheel is rotated. All this is is a 2BA bolt with a fancy head. The connecting rod is held into the crosshead with a special pin. This is not just a bolt that goes through, it's got a shape part on the other side. I'll show you in a moment. When working on miniature steam locomotives, I must say that not all crosshead pins are made this way. This one has a peg that sticks out of the side of it, which locates in a slot at the back of the crosshead. The rest of the coupling rod fixings are like this. It's a specially shaped nut with a pin through the centre. This is a taper pin and it only fits one way. I tap the pin part of the way out using a centre punch and it's a simple job just to remove it with a pair of pliers. When I reassemble this engine though, I'm going to fit this specially shaped nut with some thread lock. Then I will tap in a new taper pin because I don't want to rely too much on just the taper pin because if this falls out, the coupling rod could come loose. In this clip I'm withdrawing the small end of the connecting rod from the crosshead and then removing it entirely. In the previous episode I did mention that there was a problem with this engine. This articulated connecting rod joint is really at the wrong end. The connecting rod should really be fitted the other way round. Although I do personally think it's better if the articulated joint is on the front pair of wheels because the front pair of wheels are the first wheels to meet any undulations in the track. At first I thought, well I can just turn the rods round, but this is impossible, because the wheel centres in the axle boxes are not equally spaced. In this clip I've removed the taper pin, and now I'm undoing the nut on the crank pin of the rear wheel. With the connecting rod and the coupling rods removed on this side of the engine, it's time to give everything a quick wipe over with a cloth to have a look how good or bad the metal work is. And the good news is, most of it seems to be okay but there is a bit of rust that doesn't look too good at the front of the bottom slide bar, so I think even at this early stage I'll have a quick look at that. The first thing to do is to wipe off some of the oil and grime with a cloth, followed by scraping the slide bar with a Stanley knife blade, and if you're doing this be very very careful, these blades are extremely sharp. I'm doing this by the way to just find out the extent and depth of the pitting, and by using a piece of emery cloth wrapped around a piece of wood, I can rub it down a little bit. It's not looking too healthy. The rust pitting is quite deep. What I propose to do is remove this slide bar and clean it up properly, then refit it. Old miniature steam locomotives, and in fact old full-size locomotives, are very inefficient, very smelly and very dirty. But I really like it that way, it's very reminiscent of my childhood. I was raised in a town in the north of England in the 1950s and the bottom of our garden directly overlooked Wellington Road Railway Station. So the combination of the filth emanating from the steam locomotives that went by all the time, not to mention the mill chimneys that were everywhere in those days, made pollution a fact of life. We didn't get fog, we got smog. And this smog, or very thick fog, smelt of steam engines. They were very happy days. Anyway, back to the job, I'm removing the front bogey. This front bogey is held to the chassis in a very strange way. The nut, which is quite badly chewed up and this is not my doing, does not rotate freely in this disc that I'm undoing. And in the main bearing are two sheared off bolts, which were originally countersunk bolts that held this to the main bearing. And if that's the case, how can the front bogey swivel? This is a very strange arrangement. I'll have a look at it later. In this clip you can see that I've turned the engine over it's now upside down, and I'm removing the front fastening that holds the coupling rod onto the front wheel, or onto the front crank pin, I should say. And now, just like before, I'm removing the nut that holds the connecting rod to the crosshead. And by rotating the wheels backwards, the small end of the connecting rod comes out of the crosshead. Here's a good tip for driving out very small taper pins use a panel pin held in a pair of pliers like this. But when doing any hammering near any part of the engine, never hit the parts too hard and always control the hammer's movement. Because if the hammer slips and hits the coupling rod, then it's ruined. I should really have replaced these nuts on the crank pin so I know where they came from. 
but there's only four of them, so I'll soon find out when I put it back together. Here's a close-up of the panel pin principle as I tap out the taper pin that's used to stop these special nuts from working loose when the engine is in service. The crank pins are all in quite good condition, with not a lot of play, just the amount of play that's required to let the wheels go up and down in the axle boxes. And talking about axle boxes, I'm not disturbing the springs, I just take out two of the bolts at each side and the whole assembly lifts out. The more I look in detail at this engine, the more I realise how well engineered it is. In this clip, I'm removing the horn stay bolts and very shortly I will be able to withdraw the centre axle. At this point I had to decide what's the best way of freeing up all the motion so I can withdraw the centre axle. Do I dismantle the eccentrics, do I remove the rods which hold the end of the eccentric rods to the expansion links? And this is very simple to do, I just take out the split pins, first of all by levering them with a the screwdriver, being careful not to stick the screwdriver in my hand, then I just pull out the split pin with a pair of pliers, and then I can withdraw the pin itself. In the fullness of time I will take off all the internal motion work because it wants cleaning up and painting. There goes another expansion link pin. The next part of the job was quite simple. Turn the engine upside down again, then remove the centre wheel with all of the eccentrics and rods still in place. After removing four more bolts on the horn stays, I could then take out the centre pair of wheels. The next parts to come off are the brake hangers. There are only three of these, so I wonder where the others are. This is the tender, it's currently sat on the floor because I don't have a lot of space in the workshop at the moment. And when I look in the coal space of the tender, there's a little bit of coal and there's all sorts of bits and pieces, most of them brake parts. There's a set of three brake blocks in the form of unmachined castings and also a couple of complete brake hangers with brake blocks on, so you get the idea how they fit together, although the gunmetal scale hangers are quite different. This chassis is very dirty, very greasy and very grimy, and so with the help of this Clark's part washer and the associated solvent, I'm going to clean the chassis. This simple parts washer recirculates the fluid from the sump in the bottom up through this pipe and down through this brush, and it makes removing grease and grime a very simple job. And the good thing about this parts washer is with the help of this brush, I do not need to get any solvent on me whatsoever. I am, however, also using a small toothbrush to get into the corners. Using a toothbrush is a good idea. The only problem is, after cleaning my teeth tomorrow morning, I'll have the taste of this solvent in my mouth for a few days. And before anyone writes in, it's a health and safety warning. Using a toothbrush to apply the solvent is a good idea, but then the toothbrush must not be used for cleaning your teeth. And also, when using solvents or chemicals, I recommend that you wash your hands at least twice after doing the job. So that's it for this one. That's the front half of the chassis cleaned. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.